Welcome to the show. I'm Greg Russell, Managing Director of Mitchell Lake US. I'm here at South Food and Wine Bar in San Francisco today with Ryan Juni, who's co-founder of startup success story Omnisio. Ryan started the company back in 2007 and subsequently was acquired by Google for $15 million in cash just a few months later. Thanks for joining me, Ryan. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here. Yeah. And um, so just uh, get us started by telling us a little bit about Omnisio. I know that uh, you founded it with a couple of mates from Sydney. Um, where did the I idea come from? How did you guys come up with it? Sure. So, uh, yeah, we founded Omnisio back in October of 2007 uh, with a couple of friends of mine, Julian and Simon, all of us from Sydney. Um, the idea actually evolves quite significantly during the course of us creating the company. Initially, the idea was uh, we wanted to create a website where people could build online tutorials, um, rich tutorials with sort of interactivity and, and multimedia to teach things to other people. Mm -hmm. um, during the course of several months of us developing and iterating on the product, we turned it more into a generalized uh, online video editing and sort of annotating product. So it kind of evolved a little bit. Um, but I think, you know, it obviously ended up in a, in a good place. Omnisio was a Y Combinator company. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that experience. What, um, what, what did YC provide for you guys? And, and do you think that gave you a leg up to be, you know, acquired so quickly? Sure. So Y Combinator is uh, it's a seed stage investment company here in Silicon Valley. Uh, they're based in Boston and in, in Mountain View. And uh, what they do is invest in really early stage companies. Um, and by early stage, I mean usually just two or three people with an idea and not much more. So they're really targeting super early in the spectrum. Um, and yeah, they did invest in us. Uh, it's a small amount of cash, but they also provide a lot of advice, guidance, mentorship along the way. And so that definitely did help us um, both in sort of evolving our product idea, as I just described, um, getting us in front of investors, to sort of pitch the idea and ultimately getting us introduced to, to Google. So um, definitely they, they helped quite a lot. I read uh, on your blog recently actually that um, you, know, you were talking about YouTube Real Time, uh, a product that you've worked on and, and you've also been talking about the real timeification of the web. Um, tell us why that's so exciting to you. Um, yeah, I think it's just an exciting trend that we're seeing, especially with companies uh, like FriendFeed and, and Twitter and Facebook moving uh, very much towards instant sort of gratification as things happen you see them immediately um, it's it's kind of for me the same as when I first started using I am instant messaging probably more than 10 years ago now um, a company by the name of ICQ or Mirabilis made a product called ICQ and just when I started using that and thought wow I can see which of my friends are on the internet right now and I can talk to them right now as opposed to email where you just you had sort of this delay that kind of shift made a huge difference and now that we're seeing that for everything on the web you know I can see what my friends are doing on Facebook right now or what they're twittering right now um, and now with YouTube real time I can see what my friends are watching on YouTube right now and commenting on and I just think it's uh, it's really exciting that it really makes you feel like part of something bigger right right and are there are there privacy concerns with something like that or um, you know it, it's are there concerns that maybe you know I don't want you to see the the geeky stuff that I'm checking out at, at any certain stage? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always privacy concerns with anything like this. And um, on, on YouTube real time, for example, we have a big button on the, on the bottom of the screen which you can turn to invisible mode and then you can go and watch whatever crazy videos you want to watch and no one will know. But um, yeah, we, we find that generally people leave it on because people are happy sort of sharing with their friends what they're doing. Okay. So I'm, I'm safe then. Yeah. So, <laughs> and um, now I've seen you quoted in the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, you know, talking about how uh, it would have been so much tougher to do what you've done anywhere else in the world, I suppose, um, besides Silicon Valley. So, you know, obviously a great affinity for, for the business environment here in San Francisco and Silicon Valley. Uh, I know that you've recently moved up to San Francisco. And, you know, so, so what about on the sort of the lifestyle side? How would you compare it here to, to say, Sydney? Uh, so, lifestyle-wise, Sydney probably still does have the edge. I mean, San Francisco is a, a really fun city, um, but I guess just the laid-back nature that that sort of you, you find when you go down to Sydney, everyone's just really relaxed and friendly. The great beaches, you know, can't compare to anything, uh, at least here in Northern California. Um, so, Sydney is probably still the lifestyle choice, but career-wise and just technology and companies being formed and entrepreneurship and all that stuff. It's just an incredible sort of electricity and buzz in the air out here that you don't get anywhere else in the world, um, not even anywhere else in the U.S. really. So it's, yeah, it's amazing here for that reason. Yeah, absolutely. And um, 
I, I, yesterday was the, the infamous Beta Breakers race and party in San Francisco. I know that you, uh, that you attended. Um, did, you, did you run or did you just participate in the festivities? Yeah, I def definitely think of it as more party and less race. I, d I didn't run um, myself. I'm not really a morning person, but the, the festivities are definitely um, probably the must-see event for San Francisco. If anyone uh, ever comes to visit around this time of year, it's, uh, it's one of the best outdoor parties that you can find. Everyone gets dressed up and walks along this uh, seven or eight mile course consuming uh, lots of alcohol along the way and uh, lots of craziness ensues so it's it's quite a good time yeah. and what um can, can you tell us what the the craziest or coolest costume that you saw was oh craziest i can't even think there was just so many but i guess the most memorable is is probably more the uh the lack of <laughs> costumes which always seems to happen in any of these san francisco outdoor events um but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. You, it's just, you've got to see it to believe it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, and I also know that you're, that you're quite an avid pilot. Um, is that something that you started out in Sydney, or is that something you've picked up since you've been here in, in San Francisco? Yeah, I actually started flying out here. I um, uh, started learning down in Palo Alto, just uh, down the peninsula. About four years ago, I think, I got my private pilot license, so I've been flying for a little while. Um, just started flying again pretty heavily in the last few weeks because I'm going to start training for my instrument rating, which is the next level that lets me fly in clouds and low visibility. So that will help when we get sort of foggy days here in San Francisco, which happens a lot. Um, so yeah, it's quite great. Fun. Right. Yeah, I would I would guess that would be pretty key around here for sure. And um, and finally, uh, you know, if you were to uh, distill all the wisdom that you've that you've gained uh, through this experience over the last couple of years and and sort of. You know, give um, give something to, to to all the entrepreneurs or startups that are watching this to take away. What uh, what 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 advice would you uh, would you give those guys? Um, I think the best thing that you can do is is just to get started. Like, just do it is is what I would say. If you've got an idea that you're kicking around and you're thinking about maybe I should do this, um, just do it. Just go and start building something. Start talking to people, getting feedback. Don't just sit there and work on sort of a business plan in by yourself. You really need to get get out there. Get Ideally, get a product in front of real customers, but if, if nothing else, get your idea vetted by as many people as you can. Don't keep it to yourself. Just go and start building something, um, launch and iterate, because you'll learn so much more by actually doing it than you will by you know, pondering about the market and the potential. You'll, you'll just learn unbelievably more by just actually building something and actually seeing real usage of it. So just, just get out there and do it. Great, great. Well, thanks, uh, thanks so much for your time today, Ryan. Um, cheers. Yeah.